Hi, I'm Mark from Woodworker Source, and I'd like to share some tips and techniques for getting your best looking finish on curly maple woodworking projects like these. So this is a wood that most often comes from the soft maple tree, and usually the wood has a pale or nearly white color with a really mild or really plain grain. That is unless it comes from an irregular soft maple tree, and that's usually when you're going to find curly maple. And for a number of reasons, the tree can grow in such a way that causes the grain to compress or distort, causing ripples in the wood just like that, and therefore what we call curly maple. So what do you do to make it look its absolute best in a woodworking project? Well, I've got some tips and tricks for you. So first, a lot of the time, our customers ask for a clear or natural looking finish that keeps the light color of the wood, and that's no problem. Water-based finishes are getting more popular by the day, and they do a pretty good job of altering the color only just slightly. But what they don't do is as good of a job in boosting the chatoyance found in curly maple. Solvent-based gel polyurethanes, varnishes, and lacquers they pop the figure even better than the water-based versions, okay? But you know what's even better than that is de-wax shellac. Here's a nice board of curly maple that I finished with three coats of de-wax shellac. And the brand I used is Zinser Seal Coat. Prep your work by sanding it to about 220 grit. Then apply the seal coat by brushing it, wiping it, or patting it on. Be sure you sand between each coat that you apply to keep a good smooth finish. And then you can apply a wax to buff it out, or you can add some more protection by applying lacquer or varnish on top. Another fine choice, though, is oil, like tongue or boiled linseed oil. Now, they take longer to dry between coats, making your finishing process a longer one, but the results are outstanding. This board has a few coats of tongue oil varnish on it, and then this board has just one coat of boiled linseed oil, and you can see the nice effect. Oils tend to give a wood like maple an amber color. They're not as water white as the de-wax shellac is. And because these oils penetrate into the wood, they're not as protective as you want for certain projects such as tabletops. But you can change that. Once they're dry, simply top coat the oiled finish with de-wax shellac, then apply your favorite lacquer or varnish and buff it out to the sheen that you want. Oil doesn't take much effort, plus you can see the results right away. You just prep your work as usual by sanding to about 220 grit, and then just wipe it on. You don't want too much on this first coat, just a nice thin coating. You let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes, then with a clean rag, wipe it down. You'll have to wait about 12 to 24 hours before doing another coat though. Just check the label on your can. Now, if you want to really boost the figure even more, you're gonna need to add a little bit of color. Before you get appalled at that idea of staining or dyeing this pretty wood, the truth is you don't need much. Now there are several ways to do that, but I'll just show you two, dye and Danish oil. So dyes are a little bit different from regular wood stains you might be accustomed to, but they're just the thing for curly maple. Some are water-based, but I'm using an alcohol-based dye only because it's what I like. So I start with the maple brown color and then dilute it down, maybe 25% or so, because it's easier to control the color this way. I also like to use a sponge that has linen on one side that helps the application go nice and even. I've cut one in half because it's just easier for a small piece like this, but if I were going to be doing a tabletop or a piece of furniture, I'd use the full size. So here goes. Like before, I prep the work by sanding to about 220 grit, and then apply the dye. I work quickly, but for this process I'm really not too concerned about lap marks because I'm going to sand off the dye in just a little bit. With this first coat, you can already see the curl starting to jump out, but it's going to get a lot better. Believe it or not, the next step is to sand off the dye that I just put on, but watch what happens. Just to compare real quick, these two boards were dyed the same color, except the one on the left was sanded off. So if I were to top coat that board right now, it would look like this, but I'm going to do a few more. So I apply one more coat of dye, and then I sand that one off too. And so here's what's happening. With every coat of dye, the curls get nice and dark as well as the surface wood, but you sand off just the surface wood and those curls remain nice and punchy. And so here I go, I go do it a third time, 
And truth is, you can stop wherever you want. If you only want to do two coats, just do two coats. If you want to do ten coats, do ten coats. But I'm going to stop here at three, and I'll show you what happens. And here's a nice way to deal with lot marks that you may have developed. Just wipe your piece down with denatured alcohol right after that last coat, and it'll blend them right in. Now take a look at the back side of this board. You can just barely make out the figure, but with that dye applied, it jumps right out. Here's a nice optional trick for you. After the last coat of dye is applied, hit it with a light application of tongue or boiled linseed oil. It's real easy. You just wipe it on, wait about 10 or 15 minutes, and then come back with a clean rag and wipe it off. And watch what happens. Compare it to this board that has also been dyed but has no oil. You can clearly see the difference. And once you let that oil dry, then it's ready for your top coat, uh, whatever you want. Lacquer, varnish, polyurethane. And then another way to add color is with Danish oil. It comes in an array of color and it acts as a sealer, stain, and finish in one can. And you can see here how it really helps bring out the figure in curly maple. So you could apply just one coat of this and then top coat it with uh, shellac and then lacquer if you want, or you could uh, apply maybe two or three more coats of this to make that color uh, more vivid. Okay, so there are some tips for you. To sum it up, first, use de-wax shellac for a clear finish with excellent chatoyance. All right, use it by itself and then wax it or apply a varnish or lacquer on top for better protection. Two, use a boiled linseed oil or a tongue oil if you want a little bit of an amber color and fantastic figure pop. And three, use a dye to color the figure in a way that lets it be seen from across a ballroom. Now, if you have other ideas or if this has left you with some questions, Feel free to post them in the comments. We'd like to hear your input. Thanks.